Hey, good morning, everyone. I um, decided to do a vlog this morning. I literally just got out of bed and um, this section, Jesus was just really wrecking my heart. So um, I just wanted to come and um, share that with you guys. Today is February uh, 16th, 2022. And this section is Luke 17, 11 through 17. Here it is. While he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, 10 men with leprosy who stood at a distance met him. And they raised their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw what had when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. But Jesus responded and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. So what struck me this morning in bed was how I take Jesus for granted. I mean, look at this man's response to being healed from leprosy. And it makes sense too, right? Like, I mean, I know that the nine didn't have gratitude, but like, wow, what? A, what a life you, I can't even imagine being cured from leprosy the death sentence the horrible death sentence of leprosy and the horrible life sentence of leprosy everything that how you'd have to live out the remainder of your life and I think about how much more Jesus has done for me and how having heard this story since I was a child how I have taken it for granted. I don't even think about it in the truth of the depth that it is. Like, okay, first of all, resurrection from the dead. Like, that is so supernatural and unimaginable and beyond humanity. But then everything that he does for this life, what he offers, the joy, the hope, the purpose, the trust, I sighed because I also thought about the death to self, but in that is true life. As scary as it is, is true life. And I just think about how much of my life I've lived asleep, unconscious, like knowing this, but not appreciating this. And one of the things when I was thinking about this in bed this morning, thinking about how ungrateful I am and how I take Jesus for granted, I decided to listen to um, a little, um, a worshipful meditation that I made based on um, Pastor Todd's, our pastor's, um, he has a daily, he, sorry, I'm kind of fumbling, trying to figure out how to explain it. He does a, <coughs> a daily, actually, it sounds like multiple times a day, uh, kind of a meditation on scripture from the, the gems that he has found in scripture that are so meaningful to him. He's put together this, he hasn't memorized it's, um, anyway, so I may, I've made some worshipful meditations out of it there. Um, I'll, I'll include a link to the playlist. There's one that has his whole worshipful meditation, which is longer. And then the other, and then I've broken it down into little chunks. So I listened to the first little chunk and I'm hoping to listen to more chunks today throughout the day. But as I listened, I just realized, I don't know, it just struck me in a different way because I hear all these words so often that I don't even think about them. And so I really opened my heart and tried to let them soak in and wake up to their true meaning. And it was just so beautiful. So anyway, I'll include a link to those if that's helpful to you. And then um, the last reflection 
on this was um, last night as I was in bed, I was trying to imagine what what might, could I think of any comparable analogy of what it might be like in today's society? Because we don't have leprosy, we don't have outcasts, we don't have people, you know, I, don't, I guess we've got COVID where some, you know, you couldn't have visitors that has some, anyway. <coughs> What came to mind as I was meditating and, and praying in bed trying to go to sleep last night was um, prisoners, actually. And I thought of that because um, I think that came to mind because my daughter Anna and I just got our first prison pen pal letter. And we're, getting, we're both getting ready to write back our prisoners. And um, so kind of, I guess I had prisoners on the brain and I imagined Jesus going into a prison and that there were 10 prisoners and one of them was an outcast, even among the prisoners. And they said to him, teacher, can you help us? And he said, go to the guard. He sent them all to the guard. And when they get to the guard, the guard says, you guys are free. You are free to go. And the one, the outcast, <sighs> he was running back, screaming and yelling and thanking and praising and he throws himself on the floor at Jesus feet thanking him for his freedom anyway just wanted to share those thoughts with you maybe you too feel like you've been asleep or unconscious like I have feel free to put something in the comments if there's something moving on your heart about this if you're feeling it too whatever anything you're not feeling it. I get that. I praise you, Jesus.